Do you see the difference? I see it. So this one is bent right at the mount right there. It's, I don't know if you'll be able to see it better from the inside. Not really. But yes, it's, it's bent and this one is not. So that's what's going on. Our boot is also totally destroyed. That's not even worth putting back on. I don't have one. I'm not putting one on. I might just leave this plastic boot on there. Actually, I think that stays on there anyways. Yes, I believe so. So, and at any rate, I'm going to go ahead and, and throw that on. I'm going to look around and see if I have anything here that might work, but I know I don't. And uh, we need to get that top hat on here and uh, the spring. And they're, they're pretty heavy-duty springs. I was, I'm, I was kind of highly surprised at how heavy that spring is for this car. So, at any rate, let's get these swapped over. Brake pads are good. I checked that. It's good. Anyways, we pounded this out a little bit better. <laughs> and we're pretty close to the shape we want uh, where we can finish it off with putty. It needs to kind of come out down here at the bottom a little bit, but we're we're in the ballpark. I also need to knock this out a little bit. One thing I didn't like is in order to get the struts off of this thing, you got to take the freaking uh, window cow off because the one bolt is back there behind the window cow. Why would you do that? Some engineer somewhere is laughing. He was like, oh, check this out. Well, I'm going to put the one bolt back here behind the, the window cow. Yeah. Dingus. So, yeah. I want to get this shock on, like, before I go to bed. It's getting late. And, uh, yeah, I know. The video just started, but it's late in the day. I want to get that done. I also want to change the spark plugs in this video. I want to change the fluids in it. And uh, maybe do a little bit more body work. I don't know if we're going to get into that or not. Order different headlights for the, the, the bulbs because... These aux beam ones I got, they suck. Um, I don't even think they sell them anymore. Probably good reason why. But yeah, let's get these uh, springs swapped over and uh, get the new shock in. See this thing down on the ground with the front wheel not cambered like a drift car. Hell of flush, yo! No more drift spec! Ha! <laughs> I observed another thing while I was putting this tire on. I was looking at it and uh, somebody mounted these tires wrong. Not that it's going to affect them in any way, but uh, this says inside right here. That should be the inside of the tire. Who mounted these? If you question which way a tire mounts on, nine times out of ten the tire tells you right on the side of it. I'm just saying see how many they mounted wrong Let's just take a gander inside outside wow they got one right where does it say it inside give little timmy a break it was his first day on the job okay he mounted one correctly out of four that's not bad okay for the first day but if he does that sh again kicking him out the door okay 
no more drift spec. Anyways, if you didn't notice, this shock just collapsed on itself after I took the uh, spring off of it. Look at all, ew, that's oil from out of the shock. So yeah, this this one was it was done. You can I can definitely see it. I can I can see the acrimon on that a little bit. I don't know if it comes up on camera, but I can see it. I still need to put that window cowl back on, but struts in, everything's tightened up, we're good there. Spark plugs. Guess we're gonna have to take that funky engine cover off to see the spark plugs. Another little trick I did, uh, being that this thing says it has, I don't know that this engine has 190,000 miles on it. Being that this thing says it has 190,000 miles on it, um, I thought it wouldn't hurt to clean the inside of the engine. So the oil wasn't at the full mark. It was closer to the lower mark. So what I did was fill that to the full mark with ATF. And now I haven't run the car. I have uh, started it and let it run a couple times just to heat cycle and stuff like that. ATF has a bunch of detergents in it that your regular oil doesn't have. And that helps break down sludge and carbon deposits and stuff like that inside the engine so i don't recommend that you throw it in there and drive with it in there i threw it in for a little bit just to let it cycle through the engine uh clean any deposits and stuff like that and sometimes that can be a bad thing because it can plug things up but this thing seems to start up and run just fine um reason being i I, I don't know if I even said this on another video, but reason being, I think this might not be a 190,000 mile motor is because of that. Those are our initials, and when you go to a junkyard and you get a junkyard motor, they always initial the part that you get, mark it, so that they know that it came from them, if you have to take it back or whatever. I mean, it's not much, but I mean, that's just my guess that that... It might not be that many miles. So I already did make adjustments to this hood. Um, these hood hinges, the bottom hole is not slotted, but the top one is slotted, which, you know, you can't adjust it with only one of them slotted. So what I did was I took the bolts out, set the hood down, uh, slotted the bottom hole, and left the top one alone and then slid it up now that brought the hood out just enough to get it adjusted another thing that i did is this core support normally has holes right here that uh you put push pins through to hold a bumper but the bumper is kind of loose when you do that so whenever i was putting it down this part of the bumper was sticking out and i could push it into where it needed to be but with a push pin in there it was sloppy so i put rib nuts in here and there and uh, put 6M bolts, put threaded inserts, and, and put the bolts down in there. So I could push it in where it needed to sit and put the bolt in. So everything kind of lines up there. Now the hood's still not quite lining up the way I want it to. It's getting close. You're going to see, you know, this is, I'm getting a lot of uh, damage under here trying to hammer this out. But I'm still working on it. Calling it quits for tonight. I'll come back tomorrow evening and see what all I can get done then. All right, so I was doing a little finagling here before I went to bed. I got the hood fitting better, but with these cheap builds, you have one little mistake, and that can just ruin your whole build. Not that. Uh, so the hood's fitting better, okay? That was just some pressure with my hands and everything. Looks like it's fitting pretty dang good. I was putting that dang window cowl on. Now, don't ask me how this even happened. I'm putting this plastic window cowl in, and it's not lining up with the pen, and I'm pushing on it. That plastic window cowl cracked the glass. So it spider webbed this all right here, and then the inner glass, I can see lines as far up as right here, going across on the inside. Right here's one. And uh, that's that's pretty much going to put a coffin in it right there. I mean, that's it's it's not that it's too expensive, but with a build like this, it's that that eats a lot of what I put into this.
So at some point, I guess it's getting a windshield. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. All right, so my boo-boo last night turned out to be a $400 mistake. Oh, that hurts. When you're doing cheap cars like this, you don't have a big margin for error, and you got to try to cheap out on things. Unfortunately, glass is not one of those things you can cheap out on. Uh, I talked to my buddy that does glass and stuff, and he said, unfortunately, these sensors have expensive glass in them. So it's more than my Z windshield. But before all that happened, I did order LEDs, beam tech. I, I've had really good luck with beam tech LED bulbs. And most of them, if not all of them, don't even have fans in them. They just have uh, big heat sinks on them or whatever. Uh, so, like I said, I've, I've not had a problem with beam tech bulbs. So, I'm going to throw these in and we're going to see what the pattern looks like. In fact, I'll compare the two. Let me turn the lights off and we'll compare them right now. So the main problem I'm having now, I've had really good aux beam lights before. These ones, unfortunately, were not one of them. And they're adjustable. And I remember these now because I put them in my Camaro. And it was like I didn't have lights. Uh, the low beams are just so scattered. And you can adjust them, but they were just not kosher. So... Is that high beam or low beam? That's low beam. That's high beam. And you can see they're both of them are, are completely off. Uh, yeah, they're they're not even. And one's upside down compared to the other. They're they're out of adjustment. And I remember messing with them for hours trying to get the adjustment right, and it, I just couldn't do it. Four hundred dollars on a car like this is like make or break right there so i'm not really make so you guys need to watch these videos because i need to make some ad revenue <laughs> oh my god also right before i did that i had to order the clips to hold the prop rod in if you notice i've just been propping it there there's a clip that goes there that holds the prop rod and then one goes here that holds it in place whenever you bring it down and uh those two together was like 25 bucks just the little plastic clips unfortunately we needed them so, yeah, I remember these specifically now. In fact, I realized that I never even tightened this ring up because the bolt hole stripped out. I was drilling more holes in this ring trying to get different adjustment out of it. But if you see the bulbs, they look like that. They're LEDs, but they have like a lens over the LED or whatever. Avoid these ones. So, let's throw these beam tech in and see the difference. Now, that is 100% improvement. That's low beam. Let me go get the high beam here. Let me get in here so you can see it out through the windshield here. Big improvement. I think the uh, one bulb could use an adjustment, like spin it, so it's like the other one. But uh, yeah, there, that's way better than it was. Football games are about to come on. I want to see who's going to the Super Bowl, so I need to hurry up. Spark plugs, oil change, filter, uh, done for today. So we're going to speed things up here, and we're going to get in there and see what these spark plugs look like. Right on Rock Auto's website, tells you these are gap different. I think the normal gap is 0.43, and these are 0.4. That's what you gap these to. So make sure you gap your spark plugs before you put them in. Just saying. Oh, man, I got to go potty. I'll be back. Much better. Why didn't somebody tell me a spark plug job on this was hard?
these Denso plugs are what came out of it. They do not look horrible. Looks like the engine's healthy. Looks like they're all burning good. They also look like they've been in there for a little bit. Not, they're not horrible, but changing them's not going to hurt, especially when it's a job like this. Now, the nice thing about this is it doesn't use like a paper gasket. It has rubber O-rings, and they all still look pliable. So, besides just cleaning the surface off, um, I did notice the PCV valve is definitely spitting some oil. Not not a lot, but there was oil it ran out of there. And I took that off, and then you can see how the oil ran out of uh, the ports a little bit whenever I. So I'm gonna clean that all up, and uh, before we put it all back together. But I'm gapping the plugs, putting them in. Technically, I'm not doing it the way you should be doing it. These are like a what am I using? A three. No, 9 16 uh, or a 14 millimeter is what fit, fit these. And I do not have a spark plug socket that small. The trick to putting these in, I didn't do it with the first one, but get a piece of rubber hose, put it over the top of the spark plugs, put it down in there, thread it, then pull the rubber hose off. Checking them, they're all around 55 thousandths. Uh, one was like 58, one was 53, the other two were 55. So yeah, they're, they're definitely gapped a little too far. Uh, this should help this thing run a little bit better. Just get this back together. The football game's are on. I'm missing it. Dang it. All I need tonight is your voice and an upright piano. Cause those are two of my favorite sounds. The lion's at the gate in my mind. And we've run out of ammo. But everything is gonna be just fine. Can we roll it? Can we hold it? Can we drink it? Chop it up or smoke it? Can we peel it? Can we pop it? Cause we don't like feeling these emotions. Can we try it? Can we find it? Can we please be kind of just rewind it? This is real life. These are real times. And we're always wanting to escape them. All I need tonight is your voice and an upright piano. Cause those are two of my favorite sounds The lion's at the gate in my mind And we've run out of ammo But everything is gonna be just fine Can we roll it? Can we hold it? Can we drink it? Chop it up and smoke it? Can we I'm surprised that this thing ran decent at all Cause after the mass airflow sensor Is right there Look at how they had this on They almost well, they pretty much did destroy this boot. Now, I'm going to try to get this on the correct way and get a clamp on it. But it might be too far gone at this point. That's how it was clamped on the car. So, somebody in their ultimate wisdom of mechanicism thought that they had this thing on the correct way and they did not. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be almost impossible to get on correctly. It's been on there like that for a long time. A long time. Man, that sucks. Can we try it? Can we find it? Can we please be kind of just rewind it? This is real life. These are real times. And we're always wanting to escape. All I need tonight is your voice. All I need tonight is your voice. Now this motor actually sounds way healthier now. It's a lot quieter. It was like, it was kind of rattly. Maybe it was pinging because of the spark plugs and maybe it was because of sucking the extra air in. I don't know. Regardless, it's, it seems pretty good now. Now I did, I cleaned the air filter box out. Uh, it had some leaves and dirt and stuff in it. I don't have the resonator box on, it's laying right there. Uh, so we still have to connect that up and uh, wipe the engine down, it looks a lot better. But everything's connected right. I'm, I'm glad that that's not leaking now. Brake fluid is halfway between the low and max mark. I'm not gonna top that off, 
That just shows that our brake pads are probably about halfway wore. The battery seems to be doing good now that I charged, got it charged up, so we're good there. Um, I'm gonna let this thing warm up so we can do the fluids. And what else? Oh, while it's running, let's hook the code scanner up. I have not checked codes on this. I know the airbag light's on. Uh, so let me get my code scanner out and go over this thing. I know I promoted that Ansel one, that code scanner. And don't get me wrong, I really do like that one. That's like my second favorite. But the X tool is probably my favorite of all the ones I have, in case you guys were wondering. I, I just, mm, I don't know. Besides it not working on my transmission relearn for my Subaru, it's just nice. The battery lasts way longer than the Ansel one. I had to pretty much charge it every time I want to use it. So, well, we're getting a little smells. Two plus two in the intakes. I did clean the intakes out and I did clean the throttle body while I had it apart. Didn't clean the mass airflow sensor. But we have a Christmas tree of lights on. The service engine soon lights on right now. I just want to, I want to check this thing out while it's running. Now there's only 11 systems on this. I got one engine failure, one transmission failure, two analog brakes. I had the battery disconnect, plus the battery was completely dead. So I have failures on every system. So I'm gonna have to go through and clear all of these and then come back with you. Yeah, there's failures on everything and it's probably gonna come up as low voltage for most of them or low signal or uh, let me just uh, check a couple of these out just to see what it says. Yeah, I highly doubt it. it. We got a backup circuit for engine control module, transmission control module, yaw uh, rate sensor, uh, analog brake system communication, frontal collision detection is one. Uh, circuit for right front pretensioner is open. Circuit for left front pretensioner open. Mmm, that's the seat belts. So I'm attempting to clear all of these. Airbag did not clear three of them. Body control module, normal. Everything came back normal except for the airbag codes. So unfortunately this right front there's nothing for the airbag for the steering wheel airbag oh it's because these are current codes okay since I put a new steering wheel bag in well use one uh, it's not detecting that now so I can put elimination sensors in the pretensioners to see if it clears those as well and I might just do that so let's see all right so I have eliminators plugged in right now it just blows my mind because it did not blow these seat belts so probably something internal with the circuitry or something on it I, I don't know so I'm gonna go ahead and do an automatic read on this thing again and see I should only have the impact code which is one that you have to get cleared so let's check that oh I should add this thing came with a full tank of gas when it almost makes up for the windshield. Not really. One code came back. I haven't checked it yet. I guarantee it's that impact sensor. Also, our exhaust kind of rattles. I rev it, it goes away. Idle, got a little rattle to it. Still, yep. Frontal collision detected. So I'm gonna have to send the crash module out, but that'll clear this code and this thing should have a clean bill of health after that. Now, although I got the motor warm right now, I am missing way too much football that I want to be watching. I'm going to come back out here later, warm it up again, and then uh, we'll change the fluids and get this thing done and over with. As for now, it's pretty good. I got the seat belts out already. I'm going to send that. I didn't get the crash module out, so we got to get that yet. Uh, probably not going to happen on this episode, but we're going to get to it. So stay tuned. All right, day after work, we got all kinds of carbon monoxide fumes in here because I left this running to get warm. The thing sounds good now. It sounds a lot better since I fixed that intake tube. New spark plugs, sounds healthy. All right, I still have not got the airbag module out. I don't really have time to do it right now, but I do want to get these fluids changed, get a new filter on it because, uh, <laughs> 
I fell into another project deal, so I'm going to pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> I'll just tell you right now, it is a car from Copart, but I'm not getting it at Copart. Uh, more details in the next video, but I got it for a thousand bucks, so I'm not going to complain. You guys will see that in the next episode. So let's get this honky up in the air and get some fresh fluids in her. This is loud. All right, so we get some light on this situation because I got these new work lights now and they're just freaking bomb diggity. Where's it? Yeah! Let there be light. I think I can see the drain plug from here. If you can't see that, then you're blind. Forklift, why you do this? Both sides, why you do this? Just because I can, I think I'm going to get the little wheel out and smooth these edges off and then hit that with a little bit of enamel. It's gonna rust, obviously. There's no paint on them right there. But that's really the only thing that really screwed up under here. My new core support, eh. A little rusty on the bottom portion of it. It's still, it's, it's solid, so it'll be all right. I'm a little blown out right now. Uh, now, the oil in this is already pretty dark. I know it needed an oil change. Then I threw the ATF in there, and that's gonna like clean out any gunk and stuff that's in there, um, or help, you know, dislodge some gunk that's in there. So I'm gonna put like a, a shop rag down, and I'm gonna see if it catches anything. I'm just gonna strain it through a shop rag. We'll see what happens. First, I'm gonna empty my container because it's about full, and I don't want to overflow it. All right, so we're ready to drain the fluid now. I did notice another problem while I was down here. Not really a problem, but you notice, look how far down the seat shield is hanging. And you know I said I thought it had an exhaust leak? I almost guarantee you what I'm hearing is this exhaust shield, and it sounds like an exhaust leak. Well, there's a stud up there. I'm not sure if you're seeing it, but there's no nut on it. All I got to do is put, put a nut on there, and we should be good. It looks like it's still threaded. So, once that's on there, then that won't vibrate, and it should sound a lot better. I was kind of like just walking around smacking stuff. Look at the little tiny cat. Well, it's after. That might actually just be a resonator. The cat's up there. But, yeah. Let's get this plug out. I got some shop rags here to see if we catch anything. <laughs> yeah yeah she's dark I have my doubts that I'm gonna catch all this oh I did a good job but is it gonna strain through fast enough or is it gonna overflow the rags it's probably gonna overflow them I'm just making a mess sure why not at least most of it but if there's chunks, it should land in the rags. It is starting to overflow them now. Oops. I mean, I don't see any chunks, and we're getting down to the drippies now. And uh, it's it's not chunky, so that's pretty good. So I'll let this drain out. <sighs> Oil filter. It's right there on the front of the engine. Oh, that is going to be a messy job. Well, you, why would you... Like, let's place it above the oil pan tucked in. Okay. Which leads me to think the only oil that's on this is like right here and around here. And it's probably from the last oil change because guaranteed when you take that filter off, it runs across the oil pan and over here where it's all oily. I just, I, I, I see. It's just the way it is. I'm going to let this continue draining. You can see it's very dark still. I'm going to let this continue draining while I do the oil filter, but I was looking at these rags, and that does look sludgy. Like, it cleans some sludge out. You can see when I wipe my finger through it, it's it's definitely got some sludge there, or some thick oil. Anyways, uh, so, we probably help this engine. Maybe you'll get 10,000 more miles out of it. Maybe you won't. <laughs> and, yeah. Let's get that thing. That looks fun to do right there. I pretty much use these for, but I, I can't remember. I think I got these at Walmart. I, I use these for just about everything. I might have got them in Advanced Auto. Can't remember. You just get it up on there and tighten her up. 
and get it tightened up. Oh boy, they didn't even have that that tight. That's the way it should be. Nine times out of ten, you you I probably could have loosened that with my hand. Now she's gonna float. Oop, almost on my wrench. Boy, that stuff's dark too. Of course, it's the same oil. It should be dark. Nothing against Fram. I've used Fram filters for years on my cars when I was younger uh, and less uh, had less money and I was cheaper. Uh, I try not to use Fram anymore. I don't think they're. Uh, I don't think some of them have that drain back valve that keeps the oil up in the engine, uh, keeps it from, you know, back draining down into the pan. And I got a Bosch this time. I don't know if it's any better. Whatever. That's what we're rolling with. So in comparison, the Bosch is a little bit taller. So it can hold a little bit more oil. Has less holes for going in, but those holes are smaller on the Fram. Eh. Whatever. We're going to throw this on and that's what we're going with. I normally let that drain for a little bit and then I wipe it off. I, I did, you know, put a little bit of oil on it like this. And then I put it up in. I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera because I can't see because I have the light in my face. All right, filter is changed, dated with a UW on there, unwrecked. Um, I went ahead and cleaned these up and shot them with paint. I did both sides. Uh, just, you know, cleaned them up, used a little bit of uh, acetone, wiped everything down, and then just sprayed it with some engine enamel. I have some black engine enamel. So those won't rust any more than hopefully the subframe. <laughs> a little rusty. But before I put this down, let's get this heat shield real quick because I forgot about it. Just over here digging through my nuts. <laughs> I was trying to record me putting this nut on because it's kind of a, a hard feat. And I have the camera the wrong way. <laughs> As you can see, you got to wrap it up around and get it. And I got it. And I think it's threading. I think. I think it's threading. It didn't thread. It just went the whole way on. Oh, I gotta see if I can tighten that. It's is it tightening? It might be. Uh, let's try that. Hey baby, you wanna come over later? I got the manhanic hands. Man canic hands. Get on maybe that's not a ten. Oh. <laughs> Uh, this is not going as planned. Get up in there. I need you. If I brought the exhaust down, it would be a lot easier, but I'm stubborn and I don't want to. You, oh. I don't think this is the right thread pitch, but I tell you what, cross threaded is tight too. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. Okay, so that isn't the right thread. What is it then? It must be rust thread that's not gonna thread anymore. Darn it. I might have to put a self tapper up through this thing. Both sides, maybe. I don't know yet. I can put a self tapper right up through the center up top here. But you don't know what you're going into. Would like to put a nut on there. The back one has like a clip on it. Darn it. Well, self tappers it is. One here, one here, tight, come back here. This one was really loose. All, there's a stud broken off there, another one that's rusty. Self tapper up through that, it's tight. Back here, it was broken where there's a bolt, another self tapper, heat shield one. All right, let's get this thing on the ground, get the fluid in her, and end this episode. So this engine holds 4.1 quarts. Not that that matters, but on these older cars like this, I don't mind writing it on the, on an engine cover or somewhere around there. You know, then somebody has less information to look up. And if they don't like it, they can get some acetone and wipe it off there. I don't care. I like how they block off part of that hole so that you can't fit big funnel. Hell, that funnel doesn't even fit in there. That's what we're going to have to use. So you're going to have to fill it up kind of slow because of that. They probably have some sort of uh, funnel that screws in like the cap and then you don't have to worry about it but 
I guess that's gonna work for me. And I haven't seen just regular mobile in forever. I ordered this off of uh, Rock Auto. Mobile One, yes. Just regular mobile? No. I haven't seen that in forever. They don't sell it at Walmart, I don't think. It was the cheapest full synthetic they had, okay? That's why I went with it. Fill this up slowly. Not like this. I'm gonna spill. I need to set the camera up. Listen, I'm just complaining because I can, okay? Anyways. I hope this to spill. Four point one. Exactly. I still believe we have a slight exhaust leak. I think it's at one of those flanges that have like a donut gasket. The only thing that holds them is springs. There's bolts through there, but springs hold pressure and hold them together. I think one of them donut gaskets is, is leaking. It's probably bad. Now it's, it's quiet, but like at first start up, you can hear it going, tss, 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 you know, almost like a tick, but it's coming from underneath the car. Yeah. Besides that, this thing sounds really good now. 190,000 miles. Yeah, I don't know. Sounds a lot better than it did the day I picked it up. I don't know if Oxbeam even still sells these lights. They're they are they're junk. So, anyways, that's going to be the end of this episode. If you like this video and you're excited for the next video to see what else I got. Smash that like button, consider subscribing, drop me a comment, what do you think I'm picking up tomorrow? I'll give you a hint, it's silver. <laughs> Hi Ho Silver! Hit that dislike button if your mom's stage name was Hi Ho Silver. And we'll see you on the next episode of All Right! Right piano Cause those are two of my favorite sounds The lion's at the gate in my mind Or you can get in bed with Stewie Oh, that's cute There you go He's a good boy You guys are nuts Play nice Play nicely. Hey, you <laughs> tried to grab my camera. Yeah, you thought you were sneaky, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. Bite his tail. Get it. Him alone. I'm so sorry, Stu Bean. They don't mean to be mean to you. Craziness. Oh, my God. You just stay back here where it's safe, okay?